All right, so in this video, we're going to talk about lines, right? So this is a very elementary thing that you've been seeing for years. Um, and it, it seems really, really basic, but one of the reasons that lines seem really, really basic is that um, in, in your school career, this is something that was developed over several grades. You didn't learn about lines all at once, believe it or not. It took some time to develop the idea of just simply a straight line. Um, so how do we think about lines? How is a line defined? Well, the idea of a line goes all the way back to basic kind of Euclidean geometry, right? Going all the way back to the ancient Greeks. Um, so one of the things that we can do is, is we can talk about a line segment, right? So between any two points, we can connect them by a line segment, right? Something like that. Um, it's not yet a line. A line is what you get if you take a line segment, and, and this is one of the basic kind of um, you know, axioms of Euclidean geometry, that if you have such a segment, you can extend it off to infinity in either direction, and then you've got yourself a line. Okay? So there's a line. So what is it that makes lines special? What is it that sets a line apart from other curves that we could draw in the plane? Well, one of the defining characteristics of a line is slope, right? So you've probably thought of slope as this idea of rise over run, right? So as, as a formula, we might give it as change in y over change in x, right? So for these two points I've indicated on my line, we might write this slope as, what's the change in y? Well, we have, we can kind of draw a little right angled triangle here. Okay. The height, right, is this change. So here, this point here that I've drawn, the, I've changed the x-coordinate, but not the y-coordinate, right? So the x-coordinate has changed to c, the y-coordinate is still b. So the change in y, right, is this change between b and d. d minus b, okay? That's the change in y. The change in x you can see along here, right? The difference in x is c minus a, right? There's the slope for our line. That's fine, but I can, you know, I can, I could do this for any two points on any curve, right? I could draw a parabola, circle, I can choose two points, I can calculate delta y over delta x, right, for any curve that I want. What's special about a line? Well, the, the thing that's special about a line, what makes lines different from other curves, is that this number is constant. I will get the same slope for any two points on the line that I choose, right? So if I were to pick some other point, let's say here, and call it xy, if I calculate delta y over delta x using these two points, or using these two points, I'll get the same number that I got when I did those two points. Right? So that means that my slope could also be written as y minus b, right, over, over x minus a, and it could also be written as y minus d over x minus c, right? Those should give me the same points. And, and with a bit of manipulating here, you can actually get the equation of the line, right? If I multiply both sides by x minus a, what I get is I get uh, y minus b is equal to m times x minus a. Or if you like, uh, y minus d equals m times x minus c, right? And you might be concerned that those, those appear to be different, right? I've got, I've got an a and a b here, I've got a c and a d there. So I've got two different equations for my line, right? Because I've you know, essentially I've, I've written down these equations using one point or another point. And the point, if you like, 
is that it doesn't matter. You will get the same answer either way. Um, because in this case, if I kind of, if I were to simplify, let's say I solve for y. So y is going to be, um, so there's this m times x. Let's put that in. And then I've got minus m a plus b. Okay. Over here, y is m times x minus m c, right, plus d. Okay. So we want to believe that these are the same numbers, but that comes up to, you know, here was, I had this equation to begin with, right? So uh, m times c minus a is equal to d minus b. So mc minus ma is equal to d minus b, okay? Or, if you like, uh, moving that over and moving that over, b minus ma is equal to d minus mc. b minus ma equals d minus mc, right? So it's the same line, right? It doesn't matter which point you use. Uh, this form here, this equation, by the way, this is usually called the point slope form of a line. Um, a lot of you are probably more used to seeing it in this form here, right? Um, so mx plus, and then let's just put that all, b minus ma. Uh, this is sometimes called the slope intercept form, right? Because this number here, this b minus ma, right? That's the y intercept for your line, right? Um, I know um, you're probably a little bit concerned because I'm using this b, and this b is not the intercept, right? You use mx plus b, b is the intercept, right? Um, B is not set in stone as, as being anything, right? We, we can use letters interchangeably. Um, so most of you are probably used to writing it in this slope-intercept form, and a lot of you are probably going to insist on writing it in this slope-intercept form. Um, but it turns out, for most purposes in calculus, this is the more useful form, okay? And it's the easier one to get to because what's going to happen most of the time, most of the lines that you're going to encounter in calculus are going to be tangent lines. They're going to be tangents to curves. The information that you get for constructing those lines, well, there's going to be a slope. That slope is going to come from the derivative of some function. The derivative is going to tell us about slope. Um, the other thing you're going to have is going to be a point because you're constructing that tangent at some point on a curve, right? So the point and the slope are going to be information that you have you can immediately just plug it into this version of the line and you have your answer, right? There's no need to go to the trouble of figuring out the y-intercept so that you can do slope-intercept. Just go with point-slope. The other reason that this is more useful, later on in calculus, you'll find that this is exactly what you need if you want to talk about linear approximations, right? Um, one of the reasons that we construct tangent lines, one of the reasons we talk about derivatives is we use them to do approximations. This is going to be the more useful form to talk about that.